In my last video, I introduced the concept of the quaternion, and I also showed you how to multiply two quaternions together. What I'd like to do in this video is make a fairly simple observation about the way in which these quaternions are being multiplied together, which is going to allow us to view the quaternions as a different sort of mathematical object, namely as 4x4 four four real valued matrices. Let me briefly remind you how we multiply two quaternions, or at least what that's going to look like. Suppose we have two quaternions, the first being given by A, B, C, D, and the second quaternion being given by E, F, G, and H. Now, when you multiply the two together, you're going to get a pretty long formula, but not too complicated. The new first component, or the scalar component, is going to be given by this formula, written here. The second component, or the I component, given by this. And then the third, or the J component, by that formula. And then the last component, or the K component, is going to be given by this formula. Now this is the same formula I had written out last time. The only thing I did here is switch the order of a few terms. Just uh, commuted those terms. And I commuted them so that the E's, F's, G's, and H's are going to line up like that column-wise. Now let me relocate those equations over here. Again, the first component, the second, third, and fourth components of the new quaternion. Now, after having lined up those letters column-wise like that, this set of four expressions is just crying out to be written as a matrix times a vector. Now, how would I, multi how would I write out this set of four expressions as a matrix times a vector? Now, that's pretty easy. The vector is going to be given by that E, F, G, and H. So let me write that over here. E, F, G and H. It's going to be a 4 by 1 column vector. And what is the coefficient matrix? Now notice it's going to be a 4 by 4 matrix. I have four equations, each containing four terms, or four variables. Now to form that 4 by 4 matrix, what I do is I just read off the coefficients for the E, F, G, and H. So in the first row, I'm going to have A minus B minus C minus D. So let me write that, A minus B minus C and minus D. In the second row, I have B, A minus D, C. I'll write that here, B, A minus D, C. Here I have C, D, A minus B, C, A, C, D, A minus B. And then finally, I have D minus C, B, A. D minus C, B, A. And there you go. That's a quaternion written as a 4 by 4 matrix. As I suggested, this is a fairly simple observation, and we just made it by examining quaternion multiplication. But what I like about it is it gives us a quick connection between multiplication of quaternions and matrix algebra. That is to say, if you know how to multiply matrices, you know how to multiply quaternions. There's really nothing new you have to learn. The only thing is, these 4x4 four four matrices come in a very special form, in a very special pattern, where the A's, B's, C's, and D's are given by this template here, that the matrices have this pattern here. To put that idea another way, any calculation you could conceivably do by thinking of a quaternion as a 4-vector, A, B, C, D, like we have been doing, or written out, in the long form is A plus BI plus CJ plus DK can just as well be done thinking of a quaternion as a 4 by 4 real valued matrix where each of the entries in the matrix is given by this template here what I call a template that is you just if you have A B C and D you stick it in the right place in the matrix with the correct sign and you perform your quaternion calculations and just as long as you're able to go back and forth between A, B, C, D, and this 4x4 four four matrix, you'll be fine. You'll get the same answer. Let me show you what a calculation might look like doing it as a 4x4 four four matrix. Let me just make up a quaternion. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 6. And I'm going to multiply it by just a pretty simple quaternion, 0, 1, 0, 0, which is also equal to I. Now let me convert this to the matrix form. Now notice that the first column 
is just writing this quaternion as a column vector. So I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 6. And notice that the first row is going to be what's called the conjugate of the quaternion, in which all of the imaginary components, each of those three imaginary components is going to be negated. So the first row is going to be 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 6. Now notice that the last column is going to have a negative in the i and the k term. So I'm going to have 1 minus 2, 3, 6. Notice also that the main diagonal is going to be just a scalar component, which in this case is 1. So I'm going to draw the 1s down in diagonal. Down the anti-diagonal, I'm going to have minus 6 and 6. And one, one additional observation to make is that when a number gets flipped over the diagonal, or it gets reflected over the diagonal, it comes with a minus sign. So I'm going to flip this negative 2 over the diagonal to find what that entry is going to be. So it's going to be just plus 2, because I'm going to negate the minus 2. Now I'm going to flip that 3 over the diagonal to get this entry here, which is going to be minus 3. So there's your quaternion written as a 4 by 4 matrix. Now, to, to do this calculation, I could write out the, four, the full 4x4 four four matrix for this quaternion, 0, 1, 0, 0, just following this pattern. And I could do that calculation. I can multiply a 4x4 four four matrix times a 4x4 four four matrix to get a new 4x4 four four matrix. But we're just really interested in this first column, which means I can do, as I suggested before, take a matrix and multiply it by a column vector, namely 0, 1, 0, 0. And this just uh, helps you calculate it a little bit faster. And if you do the multiplication here, this 1 means I take one copy of the second column of this matrix. So the resulting quaternion is going to be minus 2, 1, 6, minus 3. And there's the answer, minus 2, 1, 6, minus 3. The last observation I'd like to make has to do with the simplest of quaternions. We have four components here, and a very simple quaternion can be created by letting one of the components be equal to one and the others be equal to zero. So let me let this first component be equal to one and let the others go to zero. So that's going to be the quaternion one, zero, zero, zero. Now, when you do quaternion multiplication with this quaternion here, this acts like the number one in the sense that this quaternion times any other quaternion leaves it unchanged. In fancier terms, it would be called the mul multiplicative identity. Now, that's one simple quaternion. Another one would be 0, 1, 0, 0. And that's also equal to i, 0, 1, 0, 0. Then I have j, where the third component is equal to 1. That'd be 0, 0, 1, 0. And then finally, I have k which would be 0, 0, 0, 1. And what I'd like to do is convert each of these to their matrix form. Let's work with that first one. Now, I have the template written up here, so I just follow the template. So A is going to be equal to 1. Notice that A is only present on the main diagonal, and everything else over here and also over here is going to be equal to 0, which means that matrix looks like this. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And if you know anything about linear algebra or matrix algebra, this is equal to the identity matrix. That is to say, this matrix times any other matrix is, will leave it unchanged. So that's a neat observation, that the quaternionic one, the quaternionic multiplic multiplicative identity, when translated into the land of 4x4 four four matrices, is the identity matrix. Now let me write out the i matrix. So b is going to be equal to 1. b is present here, 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 and here. So I just follow the template. It's going to be 0 minus 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And that's the matrix version of the quaternionic i. Now let me write out the J, which is going to be 
zero zero minus one zero 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 one one zero 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 and zero minus one zero zero there is your quaternionic j and finally let me give you what the k is I'm going to have d equals 1 along the anti-diagonal here. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and finally 1, 0, 0, 0. And there's your quaternionic k. Now that we're thinking of the i's, j's, and k's in matrix form, let's go back to that fundamental equation of the quaternions that really set up this whole show, which was i squared equals j squared, equals k squared equals i j k which is equal to minus one and I claim that this equation still holds even in the matrix form and let me show you that through a couple of calculations I'm gonna look at i squared equals minus one so what is that in matrix form I'm gonna take that matrix 0 minus 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0, 0, 1, 0. I'm going to take that i matrix and I'm going to square it or multiply that matrix by itself. Let me just copy this here. 0, 0, 1, 0. And we just simply do the matrix multiplication. Now before I do this calculation, we know that i squared is equal to minus 1. So try to predict in your head what's going to happen before you even do this calculation. What is going to be the new 4x4 four four matrix? So now let's do the calculation. Let's have a look at this first column here. There's a 1 in the second position, which means the new first column is going to be one copy of the second column, which is going to be minus 1, 0, 0, 0. I look at the second column. There's a minus 1 in the first position, which means I take minus 1 copies of the first column. It's going to be 0, minus 1, 0, 0. The third column has a 1 in the fourth position, which means I take one copy of the last column there, 0, 0, minus 1, 0. And the fourth column has a minus 1 in the third position, which means I take minus 1 copies of the third column, which is going to, be, which is going to give me 0, 0, 0, minus 1. And notice what this is. This is minus 1 times the identity matrix. That is to say, it's minus 1. So lo and behold, I squared is still minus 1. Except I'll draw it like that because we're talking about matrices now. And I encourage you to check the other two cases. Uh, confirm that j squared and also k squared come out to be minus 1. They come out to be the same negative of the identity matrix. Let me do one last calculation for you just to show that the relations between the i's, j's, and k's is preserved. We know from the previous video or from your previous experience with quaternions that ij is equal to k, which in matrix form means that if I multiply this matrix by this matrix, I should be getting that matrix. So let's verify that. I have the i matrix, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. There's i. Now let me multiply it on the right by j, which is 0, 0, minus 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and 0, minus 1, 0, 0. And let's calculate. I have one copy of the third column, which is 0, 0, 0, 1. I have minus 1 copies of the last column, which is 0, 0, 1, 0. I have minus 1 copies of the first column, which is 0, minus 1, 0, 0. And I have one copy of the second column, which is minus 1, 0, 0, 0. And lo and behold, there's your i, there's your j over there, and there's your k. So indeed we have, in the land of 4x4 four four matrices, that i times j is equal to k. And I think that'll do it for this video. I thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video or any of my other videos, I encourage you to subscribe and stay tuned for more interesting videos.